We've got complete coverage for you. We want to bring in Fox News military analyst, Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North, Geraldo Rivera, and Arizona Congressman Martha McSally, who is, of course, an Air Force veteran. Thank, uh, thank you all for being here. I want to start with you, um, Ollie. Get your take on what we just heard. The big takeaway, well, one, no civilian uh, casualties. All planes were able to land safely. All missiles were able to reach their target. What do you say? A mission accomplished? Oh, absolutely. Uh, look, uh, just a little historical note. 32 years ago, tomorrow, the Reagan administration struck t terror targets in Libya, both in Benghazi and in Tripoli. It took us 10 days to pick the targets and to give the assignments out to those who had carried out. France, by the way, in that particular mission, denied us overflight rights, and this time France is in it with us. Uh, the, the Bell Disco bombing, which occurred on the 5th of April, we couldn't respond to it until 10 days out. This time it's a, it's a week out. And we lost an aircraft in that. In this case, not a single U.S. asset was endangered by the Syrian anti-aircraft fire. I think that what you've got today is a far more effective military at accomplishing limited goals with an appropriate amount of force. Now, whether this is going to stop Assad, all those questions about what's next, and every time it's asked, the uh, spokesman for the administration, whether at the White House or the Pentagon, come back and say, it's up to Assad. And it is up to Assad. And you can be absolutely certain whether they're going to say it or not. We can say it. If, the, if Assad uses chemical mm -hmm. weapons again, the next strike is going to be even more significant than this one with 105 <laughs> standoff and cruise missiles. That's a good point. I want to bring in uh, Congresswoman McSally. We heard from this briefing that uh, General McKenzie used the words crippled, degrading, saying that they had struck really at the heart of the chemical weapons production facilities. Uh, are you confident that that has been achieved and how concerned are you that we may yet see another attack? Well, look, I just want to say I'm so proud of the men and women in uniform uh, that were involved in this attack, having uh, planned and been involved in this in the past in the military. It took a whole lot of effort for them to be able to precisely hit these targets and do it in such an incredible way uh, with such precision uh, to, to go after them and to uh, debilitate them. Uh, so, sure, we'll look at the, you know, the, the damage assessment afterwards, but as you could see from the photos, I mean, they were very specific targets to uh, degrade their chemical capabilities and and the research and development. Uh, and also, those, those are the operational goals. But the strategic goals were to send a message uh, that using weapons of mass destruction will not be tolerated by the civilized world. Uh, and so I'm very proud, and I stand with the president for this decision. Uh, and now the next steps are up to Assad and Putin and the Ayatollah. Are they going to continue to go down this road? Uh, this cannot be tolerated. Remember, Russia used chemical weapons in London, uh, and North Korea is watching as well, uh, killing his own half-brother uh, mm -hmm. with VX nerve agents. So this was a very strong message strategically and operationally. Geraldo, you've covered that region of the world for quite some time. You know it well. Uh, as they said from the podium, this, there was no material resistance from Syria, meaning if they, when they did shoot, it was after our missiles had hit. He wouldn't have, Assad would not have taken that response without Russia telling him to do so at some level. What does that say to you about Russia's response to some American strength here? Well, first of all, I think that it is a huge win for President Trump. I had my doubts because I feared that the retaliatory strike was in cold blood. Too much time had passed. I was wrong. This was a dramatic and proportional strike. Uh, it was awesome. I, I'm delighted that the British and the French joined in this awesome air armada, which apparently accomplished exactly what uh, the Pentagon wanted it to. Uh, it sent a message to Assad in terms of Russia. I think the response from uh, Putin has been relatively muted. The same thing about China, even Iran, even Syria itself, uh, all seem to have uh, uh, come to the conclusion that Assad had it coming. Uh, you know, I don't know where we go from here. I don't know what our strategic, uh, you know, goal is in Syria. Is it the parti partition of the country? Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? Is it the ousting of Assad? Uh, you know, I hope that, that we don't stick around to build a, build a nation here. But in terms of this military strike, I think that it, it hit exactly what they wanted it to. 
The Syrian air defense uh, capability was shown to be woeful in the face of our, our modern weapons. And it, it really does appear that there was no wag the dog uh, vibe from mm -hmm. this. Nobody suspects that President Trump did this uh, to detract from uh, or distract, I should say, from, uh, you know, his uh, his domestic woes. This was in every regard. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say mission accomplished, but I will say that Assad crossed the red line. Trump said, don't mm -hmm. cross the red line. If you do, you're going to be punished. I promise you, you're going to be hurt. And he was punished. He was hurt. And I, uh, I applaud the president and the, uh, you know, our men and women and our armed forces. They've done a magnificent job. The congresswoman and Col uh, Colonel North are absolutely right. Um, Ali, not everyone agrees that this was the right way to approach this. You have a number of Democratic lawmakers, Kirsten Gillibrand, for example, who says there was no plan, there was no strategy, no authorization. You have served this country for so many years. How important is it at a time like this for the nation to come together to support what the president is trying to do here? And, and when they cross that red line, a dictator in another nation, that we act on that. Ollie. Was that for me? Ollie, that's to you. Uh, Ollie. Well, on. look, first of all, I want to go back to what I said at the beginning, and everybody's reinforced that. This was a limited objective and an appropriate amount of force was, was used on it. The fact that we've got two other allies engaged in this thing, one of which, 32 years ago, wouldn't let us overfly France. We mm. didn't ask France to join us in the attack on Libya. All we wanted to do was fly the FB-111s from, from England over France to attack Libya. Look at the world is standing with us on this mm. idea that you cannot use with impunity chemical weapons against, against anybody certainly not civilians. And so I look at this, all those questions being asked about, can we believe the Russians? Look, look at the Russians lie about everything. How do you know they're lying? Their lips are moving. The <laughs> idea that the Russians are going to tell the truth about anything in this thing is foolishness. Kind of and, and what I'm suggesting to you is what we ought to be focused on is the reaction of the Assad regime mm. and their enablers on the ground in Syria. Forget the rest of it. They can scream all they want, but the bottom mm -hmm. line is what's happening inside Syria right now to make sure that this Syrian civil war doesn't see any, any further use of those chemical weapons. Congresswoman and Sally, if I could just interject real quick. So we are hearing from your colleagues, many Democrat members, saying that the president should have sought authorization. What do you say? Well, let me just say, uh, in this environment, a lot of the Democrats are going to resist literally everything that the president does, and some of them are auditioning for, pres or, you know, for president themselves. Mm -hmm. right. uh, so that's not helpful. Uh, in this case, I believe the president had clear authorities under the Constitution, his Article II authorities, uh, the War Powers Act, uh, the AUMF. Uh, he had all the authorities he needs. Look, as soon as I landed last night, uh, when I got back to Tucson, I had a phone call from an Undersecretary of State uh, calling me with consultations to give us the information. Uh, we are in very close contact with the appropriate uh, committees and the leadership. We will continue to be moving forward, uh, but I think this is just an, another example of the Democrats resisting everything the president does and the hypocrisy of how they're treating him versus uh, previous uh, Democrat president. Geraldo, uh, Ollie North pointed out how France treated Libya different than how they are now joining us. The same could be said of the UK. In 2013, President uh, Obama effectively stood down on the red line in large part because the parliament in the UK said we don't want any part of Syria. Now here they are directly aligned with us taking this stand on the use of chemical weapons. What does that say about President Trump's leadership uh, and his approach in the world and specifically to this problem? Well, it's obvious that I, I covered the Libya, Libya strikes over 30 years ago. And I remember that the, the uh, contorted approach of our bombers was so prolonged that many in the news business knew that the strike was en route and we voluntarily kept quiet about it until they, uh, they were carried out because we didn't want to endanger our airmen coming on those F-11s, uh, 111s. But we have a situation here where clearly France and Britain and the United States stood together. This was, again, a proportional, dramatically effective attack. Where we go from here, I think, is a big question. Uh, I think it's irrelevant about the War Powers Act now and the whining from Congress. The fact of the matter is that Trump said he was going to do something, and he did it in a very, very effective way. 
There is a very, very big and profound question that I would love our government and the allies to ponder now. Are we going to partition, uh, partition Syria? Will there be a Sunni Syria mm -hmm. and a Shiite Syria? Uh, you know, what's the end game here? Will this force the parties to get together to negotiate some post-war uh, Syria? Because the, Syria right now is an open wound, still bleeding refugees into Europe, still mm -hmm. destabilizing uh, the Middle East. But at least the president has made clear that weapons of mass destruction will not be permitted regardless of any political or military end goal. Right now, we say that red line means something, Assad. Dare you step over it again? We doubled the missiles from last year. This time, next time will be an exponential increase in the response. I really do think, despite skepticism from people like me, the president has done something that I believe he deserves credit for. Now, moving forward, these are the issues. These are the big stuff that we've got to consider as a country. That's why it's so annoying. It is so distracting to see uh, stories of porn stars and, and, and playmates and so forth, uh, access Hollywood tapes. I mean, at what point did the American people rebel against the, uh, the tabloid crap and focus on what is truly in the national interest? Ali, I want to give you the last word here. We've heard sure. from Russia now condemning these attacks, saying this only escalates the violence worse. Where do you see things going from here, and what advice do you have for President Trump moving forward? Well, first of all, Syria is a totally failed state. The ultimate outcome is going to be a completely different map than we're looking at right now. And that's not going to be our determination. That's going to be the people on the ground working with others in the, in the region. There are a lot of players in this. The most important message that was delivered last night wasn't just to Assad. It was also delivered to Tehran and Moscow. They are the enablers of this kind of activity. They're the enablers of prolonging this war. The Turks are big players in all of this. The fact that you've got Egyptians and Jordanians and Qataris and the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia backing this measure shows that there's a, a momentum that's being created to help fix this problem and stop the atrocities that have been taking place inside Syria now for better than six years. This is a horrific war. Mm -hmm. It's got to end. Absolutely. Well, Oliver North, Geraldo Rivera, and Lieutenant Colonel Martha McSally, who was a fighter pilot as well in the military. Appreciate Colonel. all your time this morning. <laughs> Colonel, you my goodness. Colonel. I'm sorry, ma'am. I should always get that right. Thank you all me. for being. She does outrank me. That's for, <laughs> for sure. That's for sure.